Hello and welcome back to Green Valley Zoo, episode 6. A uh, bit of an odd episode this one. Um, I, I started this area intending it to be um, not a habitat but just a, uh, a rock garden. Um, I used this technique with the paths um, to create a two meter path. I, want, I wanted it to not necessarily really be used by people um, but to, to at least look like it could be. Um, so I've got this nice winding gravel path through this area which I think looks really nice especially once you start decorating it with the rocks uh, these moss rocks in particular um, I think are fantastic these are the um, the adapt adaptable rocks is it you know you, you turn them around and, uh, and the, the moss stays on the top um, really really nice looking things um, but as as time went on and as you'll see I, I ended up um, after I had completed the pathway with the rocks, uh, I decided um, that it was a perfect location for a habitat. Um, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, and again, even once I decided that it was going to be a habitat, I ended up um, changing my mind a couple of times as to what was going to be in there and how it was going to work. I, I built a building which disappears. Um, in fact, I am still not 100% happy and I, I may well make a few changes um, before I record the real time part of this video, but we shall see. Uh, but for now, let's um, just talk about what I'm doing here. Um, pretty straightforward, just I, I wanted this to look almost like it was actually um, a natural part uh, of what was here before the zoo was built. So these rocks would be very hard to fake. Um, if they were real rocks with moss on, you, you, you can't fake that. that. That's the sort of thing that needs to happen over time. So um, yeah, I wanted it to almost look like maybe they'd moved the rocks here from elsewhere. Um, so they were real rocks, real moss, but maybe piled in a fake way. Um, and then obviously with a nice path going around them and through them, um, which I think turns out really nice. I mean, the, the, this this method of, of creating the small pathways is uh, is brilliant. It, it's so helpful. May not be very functional if you actually open the zoo and you get people walking on the paths. Uh, I can't, I haven't tried it myself yet. This is the first time I'd actually use this technique. Um, I, so I don't actually know how people interact with these small paths um, but I'm not too fussed about that um, like I said I don't even know if I'm going to open the zoo at all at any point and let people in or if I'm just going to keep building it and designing it and making it look nice um, and then I put the water in and, and as soon as I put the water in I thought well that's the perfect edge to a habitat um, and I thought well if people are walking on this path similar to what I did with the Galapagos tortoises I thought well it makes a perfect edge for tortoises and obviously there are another uh, a breed of tortoise in the game uh, the algabra tortoises i believe they are so i thought let's just get a couple of them in and and see what i can do with them um, clearly you can see there they can't cross the water because they can't swim um, so that was a perfect edge to an enclosure um, and i thought yeah job done brilliant uh, but then i actually decided a bit later on that I wanted to mix my animals a bit so I put in uh, another animal which we'll see in a minute um, and in fact I got very lucky putting this other animal in and it, it turned out um, I discovered something very interesting which we'll, we'll discuss in a moment or two um, but for now um, this, this is where it all went a bit wrong actually because I put uh, my idea of having a keeper hut nearby it, ju it just didn't work here. I, I, I put it in, I, I put a building around it and it was too big, too in the way, too unnecessary because the tortoises are quite small. They really wouldn't have needed a big enclosure, um, a, a big building inside the enclosure, which is what I put in here. And it just, I wasn't happy with the material. I wasn't happy with how it looked. It was too similar to the building in the other enclosure with the tortoises. 
um, and so I, I, I end up just getting rid of it and not having a keeper hut attached uh, to the enclosure. Um, and so what I do, I move the entrance around to the far side of the enclosure near the other tortoises and the work zone then uses the other, uh, the keeper hut from the other tortoise enclosure in the end. Um, which is fine, it's, it's, it's nearby so the, the keepers don't have to walk too far. Uh, and what I decided as well once the building is gone is uh, I extend the habitat wall right out to the path as you can see just there in that cut. The building's gone uh, and the, um, the enclosure is as big as the area would allow and my other animals are now in and as you can see it's to tape here. Uh, I love the tape here. I love tape here in real life. They they are cute looking things, similar to the aardvarks. You just want to stroke their noses, honestly. They are just the cutest looking things. They really are. Um, <laughs> so I put them in and I discovered something very interesting. Obviously the tape here can swim. Uh, and I thought, oh, they're going to be able to climb up onto these rocks and then hop onto the path and escape. But I realised they could get up onto some of these rocks. But then for some reason they couldn't get off of the rocks and onto the pathway and so what it what it means is that the tape here cross the water they hop up onto the rocks and they lie on the rocks next to the path so the members of the public could just stroke them but the tape here for some reason don't walk away onto the path and escape um, so a bit of luck there absolutely fantastic um, it, it creates a whole new type of enclosure because it's essentially a path going through the enclosure um, which is not what I intended at all. Um, so yeah, it worked out very nicely. Um, some basic foliage in here, again, um, not too fancy. Um, lots of uh, lots of bracken um, and ferns. Um, some nice rocks. I, I wanted these rocks so that the tape here could climb onto them, um, which was actually quite tricky because they don't seem very good at hopping from rock to rock, which is obviously why they can't escape. Um, but believe it or not, the tortoises can climb better than the tapir, which is a bit strange. Um, so the tortoises and the tapir can make it up onto these rock formations that I put in. Um, here we go with the bracken. Uh, the, the hut there that I built, I'm not happy with that. That's the bit that I'm probably going to change before the real time segment of the video. Um, I, I wanted the idea of it with the archways was that the tortoises could get in through the low archways and the tape here can come in through the big archway at the front. Um, but it, it, I'm not happy with the look at all. Um, but hey, that's what happens in this game. Sometimes you build something and it just doesn't work out. So you just keep going until eventually you're happy. Um, so that's what I will do. Uh, as you can see, the tape here do go in there and the tortoises do as well but um, I, I'm, I'm just not quite happy with it so I will rearrange that. Uh, a little bit of enrichment going around for, for both of them. Um, now in real life I, th I think these these animals probably would get on fine with each other. Um, I know tortoises are completely harmless um, they wouldn't hurt any other animal um, and in fact certainly in, in wildlife parks in England here you often do see tortoises in among uh, other animal enclosures because they they just get on with things they, they they don't bother other animals and other animals generally wouldn't bother them either um, I'm not too uh, au fait with tapirs I don't really know too much about them uh, I, I think they're fairly docile creatures I, I don't think they would um, attack tortoises um, I'm more than happy having them together in this zoo I think they, they work nicely together and I didn't want it to just be tortoises because I'd only just done a tortoise enclosure so I, I wanted another animal um, I, I almost wanted it to be like it was a tapir enclosure and then they inherited some tortoises and, and needed to put them somewhere so they put them in with the tapir um, that's my backstory and uh, that's what I'm sticking to um, here I, I'm just again ferns because this is obviously a damp area there's water there's moss um, it's perfect for ferns. So again, um, just lightly decorating, not too much, um, just just plonking them around, making it look natural, um, 
keeping the front bits clear the the two areas with the flat rocks and the, at, at the front of the path near the water just keeping them clear because um, that's where the people would stop to look into the enclosure and that's also the rocks where the tape here can come up right next to the path so i didn't want to put any foliage around those and then i, had, I saw this this little area off to the right here um you'll see me in a minute i decided to make a small waterfall in here and this was my first attempt at using these water feature pieces and it's tricky i'm not going to lie it took me a while uh, i'm very happy with the result um but trying to get the combination of the the right parts the bottom of the waterfall is quite easy uh, this top part which is called foam uh, yeah rapid foam i just couldn't get it to work it's too big uh, i needed it to be much more narrow um, so in the end that actually disappears um, and then i it took me a little while to figure out how to do the top uh, of the waterfall uh, in the end i used the small jets uh, and you just put i think five or six of them next to each other and angle them in the right way and eventually it looks um, like it's one piece um, but uh, I, I, you know, it took me a while to get there. Let's just say that. <laughs> um, uh, but again, it's a, it's a learning process. I'm still learning how everything in the game works uh, and how you can manipulate things to do what you want. Um, so yes, in the end, I was happy. Uh, as you'll see in a moment, I, um, I just about figured out what piece to use for the top. I, I th this was actually a waterfall top piece, but it isn't. It's, it, that's where the water's going over the edge. It's not where the water's coming out of a jet, which is what I essentially wanted this to look like, like it was fake. I tried these large pieces, which are great, but just not suitable um, in this situation. So yes, I thought, ah, yes, I, I need that, but I, I, I need several of them and I, I only need them, I, I need the end piece, not the, the, you know, not the immediate bit where the jets are coming out. So you just sink them into the rocks, move them back, and uh, hey presto it was uh, the right effect in the end and then just a bit of a rock over the top to make it look clearly like it's it's a fake waterfall obviously um and yes it it, it, it looks fine in the end so um i will show you more of that in the real time which uh is coming up oh you can see the the tape here on the left there already uh making use of the uh, line down by the path uh yes i will see you again in a moment in a real time segment Okay, and here we are with our wonderful tape here. Look at this little little thing. Isn't that adorable? You just want to stroke them, don't you? Look at that nose. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. I love them. Um, okay, so yes, here we are with our tape ears and our tortoises. Um, uh, there's quite a few changes, actually, since the, uh, the time lapse was recorded. Um, I think the the biggest one is probably the um uh what do you call this the shelter um i completely redesigned this so i i didn't redesign it as much as i was thinking i was going to actually um and i wasn't happy with it before uh, i wanted it to blend in a bit more to the environment um i i previously had small archways along the sides um for the tortoises to go in and out but it just it didn't look right so i i kept it fairly similar it's got the main arch at the front here um, and as you can see the tortoises are still going in and the tape is still going in but the main thing I, I did was just to give it a, a living roof this is called um, you have sort of lots of small mossy plants ferns um, actually just growing on the roof and some ivy on the front again just breaking up these sharp edges because um, the sharp edges just don't look nice do they and yeah, I was, I was very happy actually with, with how that looks now. Um, it's, it's big enough for everyone to get in there and share it. Um, and then the other one I did, because I thought the idea was this was going to be for the tapirs to go and sit in. And then I thought I'd do a separate one for the tortoises. But as you can see, the tortoises do use this one as well. But I gave the tortoises a whole new one over here. Now what I did here was use this new wood i wanted this to look like a whole new addition to the enclosure like a modern um in inclusion um so it's this lovely new i think it's australian wood 
Again, living roof, because I think it just looks nice with the ivy hanging down the side. And then what I did is put one of my heat lamps inside. I borrowed this from the, um, the other tortoise enclosure and hung it down and um, the tortoises can get in here and the tape it can't. So the idea is the tortoises can get under here, escape from the tape here and lie down on their hay um, underneath the heat lamp. And they do, I have seen them in here uh, using it, but uh, not at the moment, but I assure you they do go in there. Um, so yeah, I was, I was really happy with that actually. I think that looks rather nice. Um, can't remember what new additions I've I've done here. I, I detailed the water certainly. Again, the fallen logs, one of my trademarks. I just think they, they just make the area just look so much nicer and more detailed. Some reeds and some of these, um, I forget what these are called. Um, the eel grass, that's the one. This this stuff is fantastic. I actually, I, I, even though it's an underwater plant, I do use this in some of my normal flower beds as well because it just looks fantastic. Um, as you can see, the tapirs do enjoy having a nice swim here. Um, I put an education board here and then a, a similar one over on this side here, one for each animal, thinking that this is where the people would gather. Um, so the idea is I, I left this bit clear and I left this bit clear of foliage because this is actually where the tapir, they can come right up on here. Let me show you. This is, I, I don't know why this is, um, but it's its its very good for, for the game. But basically they, they can come up onto these rocks here. Uh, they can jump over to this little patch, but mainly they do come up, they lie on these rocks, but for some reason they can't then just hop off onto the path and escape. <laughs> I don't know why, but they can't, and I'm fine with that. Uh, it may be something to do with the big rocks here, whether the, um, the exclusion zone from these maybe just comes over here and stops them from walking off. Um, it was completely unintentional if that is the case, but it's it worked out absolutely fantastically um, because now it's essentially a petting zoo. So the, the people will come in, they can stand here, the tapir will come and lie here and, and they, could, uh, they could actually touch them. Um, which probably wouldn't happen in a real zoo, let's be honest, but um, for the sake of the game, uh, I'm, I'm fine with it. Um, and I think it looks nice because it means I didn't have to put any f any fences in, um, which just makes the whole place look much much nicer. Um, and obviously you got the uh, the waterfall finished. Uh, I'm very happy actually with how this looks in the end. It did take me a while to get there, but I think once you once you cover up with rocks, um, so it's, it's clearly a fake waterfall. It's not meant to look real. Clearly there'll be a pump system under here somewhere that's pumping the water out of a hole under this rock, but that's fine. Um, it looks real, it looks good. It looks like the water is actually flowing like it's meant to. Um, and obviously the, the detailing of just a few ferns and things around there um, makes all the difference. Uh, put one of these large date palms, had a big gap here. I didn't wanna just fill it in with, with rocks because um, again, I thought, well, maybe this is where the uh, the system is the filter system or the pump system for the the waterfall so uh, maybe the rocks would make sense it would be accessible for a person to jump down in there and access something um, i may actually put some detail down here some sort of little electrics box or something um, so i've just stuck a big date palm in there i think it's a date palm yes it is a date palm good i'm slowly learning what all the uh, the trees in this game are called um, being a gardener, I should probably know these things, but believe it or not, working in England, I don't deal with a lot of date palms. Um, I wish I did because they're fantastic looking things, but uh, you know, none of my gardens that I work in have these trees in. Um, oh yeah, a little bit of detailing. I did this over in the aardvark enclosure, just put these vents down. Um, again, it just, just that little touch of realism makes it appear that um, clearly it is a, a fake water hole and that there's probably some sort of filter system underneath. I think I yeah, put one at this end down in the water there as well. And um, yeah, I think that was sort of it. Oh, and I also just put a little sign up, tapir walk. Um, I did that at both ends of the path. Uh, excuse my crazy camera work. Um, oh yes, and obviously along the path here as well. This I was really happy with. Again, using these, um, what are they called? The uh, the faux rocks, the aquatic faux rocks. Sunk those in, and then I just used the moss rocks and sunk the moss rocks in all along here, all along this edge and down this side as well. 
I think it looks absolutely brilliant. I really do. I'm not blowing my own trumpet. It's a very easy thing to do, but once you've done it, it's uh, it's very effective. It really does look like these rocks belong here, and that the, the the moss has actually grown all over them. Um, yeah, it looks very real. And and obviously again, just dotted a few palms along there just to decorate it and and break it up a bit. Um, and yeah, I, I'm I'm very happy actually. Again, as I always am, luckily so far in this game, I'm, I've I've been happy with uh, with all the enclosures and projects that I've put in so far. Um, I'm sure at some point the time will come when something goes wrong and I'm not happy. And if that's the case, I will tell you, and I will show you what has gone wrong. And who knows, I may even manage to correct it and uh, and show you uh, the finished result when I'm happy. We shall see. But for now. Uh, I think that's all I have to talk about uh, with the tapirs and um, the, oh yes, I always get this name wrong, it's, it's, it, is it Aldabra or Algabra? I get it wrong, it's Aldabra, I think I called them Algabra tortoises uh, in the time lapse. Um, I apologise, they are Aldabra tortoises. I am only human and I make mistakes. Anyway, thank you so much for listening, I really do appreciate it and if you want to give me any feedback please leave me a comment be it good be it bad or be it uninterested and neutral i don't care just talk to me thank you very much for listening i will see you next time bye for now